Thank you for listening to our podcast on YouTube. We are super excited about the content coming your way. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of it. Welcome to the Face to Face Ministries podcast. I'm Kathy Little. And I'm Melinda Wilson. And we are talking all things inner healing, true connection with Jesus, and the full benefits package of the cross. Thank you for joining us. Welcome back. Welcome back. We've hit double digits. Woo! <laughs> Partay. This is episode 10. Who would have thunk? I know. And it's just the start. It, it, I mean, it we're going to have like a thousand and ten <laughs> once we get all this content out. Yeah. So like we were saying in the last episode, we have a super special interview that we're starting to release today. Heidi Baker Heidi of Baker. Iris Global. Just a real quick about her. She has a PhD in systematic theology. That she, sounds pretty impressive yes, right there. <laughs> yes. She actually went to school for that in London at the uh, London Theological Seminary. She was the first woman to ever obtain a PhD from that school. This is cool. a smart woman. Okay? Yes, she is. So she when is. we're we're talking to her, just remember that, that this is not airy fairy, ooey gooey. This is all about feelings and no. experiences. This is a woman who has worked hard She's educated in, in every way. And yes, in, and in that though, she, in 1980, she and her husband Roland started Iris Ministries. It is now called Iris Global because it has gone all over the world, but she primarily lives in Mozambique. They have changed Where's the face Mozambique of the, Mozambique, for people who might Africa, not know? <laughs> started Africa. out as the poorest nation of the world. They were, they've been missionaries all over the world, including Asia and England. And then the call of God took them to Mozambique. They yeah. wanted to minister to the poorest of the poor. Please read about her, Iris Global. Yeah. They literally feed tens of thousands of children every day. She doesn't call them orphans anymore, even no. though technically they are, but yeah. they have been adopted into the family of God and into loving workers and teachers and um, and people that have that work for Iris Global that love them. People from Mozambique, people from all over the world come and serve in Mozambique and in other bases all over the world that Iris has started. They have literally saved tens of yes, thousands they have. of lives. They have. It, I, and I'm talking about in feeding them, feeding the hungry. This is their first mandate is to keep people alive, feed them, yes. clothe them, educate them. Taking care of the least of these. Taking care of the least of these, those who yeah. cannot care for themselves. And yeah. they train them up and many thousands of, and I don't know the exact number, but many, many though of those that have come in as orphans are now pastors and they're doing the same thing and yes. bringing in other orphans. Well, they've and, planted like 10,000 plus churches. Oh yes. And that was a few years ago. Yeah. So it's probably a lot more yeah. now. Well, that's pretty amazing. And so she was coming to our church for an Iris Global Conference and we thought, let's just ask, see if, if she'll give us an interview. And she did. And we found out after the fact that she had turned down three other invitations for interviews, one of them was some with somebody pretty high profile and it was going to show up on God TV, but yet her heart and passion for being face to face with Jesus and hearing that that's what our ministry was about, and what the project was about. She said, yes. So I'll tell you, I have never been so honored. I yeah. don't, I mean that, yeah. I mean, seriously, so honored that we were able to have time with this, amazing giant for the mm. kingdom of God, mm. and yet so humble, which you will hear in our interview. <laughs> so here we go. This is Dr. Heidi Baker of Yay. Iris Global. We're so honored to have Heidi Baker of Iris Global here today. And Iris Global, you have how many bases all over the world? Oh, by the time I say it, it'll be another one birth. <laughs> but I believe it's 74 bases oh, now. Wow. So you could say 74 and counting. Yes, 74 on, and counting. On every continent except um, Antarctica? We don't have any in Antarctica. But, but come soon. on, if there were more human beings there, <laughs> we Just would the have penguins, one. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe some scientists will go and plan to base there. That would be awesome. There you go. That's that would be a special calling. You'd have the opposite of the uh, the weather, the climate of Mozambique to Antarctica. So <laughs> that'd be great. That would be. We're ready. 
I would love to hear how you help people connect with Jesus face to face. Well, I'm just I'm happy to be here <laughs> right now cuz I believe we're going to connect with them in this time just yeah. even as we're sharing. And I I feel often uh, like the Lord just calls me to go into the secret place in front of uh, maybe a, a corporate gathering. could be a 1,000 people. It could be 20,000 people. And I, I first I was kind of taken aback by that. Like, really, you want me to take them in mm. to the secret place? And, and they're all here watching. And he, he just kept encouraging me. Yes, they don't know how to go in. So just just go in. And, and just go in, and many, many will, will go in with you. And so that's really what I do is I just seek him mm. and worship him instead of trying to get out more words or mm. more points. Because if we can get in the glory, if we can just get face-to-face -face with him, <laughs> everything changes. Everything changes. Can you share what you mean by getting in the glory? Because I don't think everyone's going to understand what that means. Yeah, well... You can actually feel the presence of God. You can feel the presence of God. And there is something, the kavod of God, the heavy, weighty glory of God. You can actually experience that and feel that. And it's not that we're just all about feelings. I mean, mm -hmm. we work in famine zones and war zones and, and desperate situations. And at times it's hard to, to know how to feel the glory in the middle of a war zone. But mm -hmm. it's possible. A lot of moms may think, well, how can I get in the glory when I've mm. got three kids under five and I'm, mm. I'm just all about trying to clean up all these messes. Mm. But there's something about him. Like right now, we're in the presence. You can feel he's here. <laughs> he's just, you welcome him. Mm. There's something about welcoming God that he enjoys. And so we welcome him. The first thing we wake up mm. in the morning, we welcome him. As we're going to sleep at night, I find myself, I, I wake myself up sometimes just praying in the spirit, uh, which is a, a language, a heavenly language, that mm. when, you, when you just give yourself to him and you turn yourself over and you ask him to fill you up, to baptize you, to immerse you with his spirit, he gives you a new way to pray. And it's not just one of the languages you may know. It's a new language, and, and it goes past, like you were mentioning, past the left brain. Mm -hmm. It's a right brain prayer. It's it's just being with them. Just worshiping from the depths of your heart, just worshiping him. And then you feel him actually coming in into wherever you are. You could be washing dishes. You could be going on a walk. You could be changing diapers. You could be, um, you could be doing surgery on mm. someone. The presence of God, it comes in. And obviously, the more you're in the Word, the mm -hmm. more you understand what it is to be in the presence of God. So you stay in the Word, you stay in fellowship with Him, with people, you, you hear His voice, and you just say, yes, Lord, and you <laughs> yield yourself. Um, I uh, My thesis for my PhD, I was very interested in in how this looked uh, with, with glossolalia and xenoglossia, mm -hmm. and, and it was very much about kenosis, and you understand that word, a, an emptying out. Mm. So there's something that happens when we want to go face to face, where there's something of an emptying out of I am, I'm not going to let all my my own thoughts and my mind and all the things I need to do. You know, I've got to go to the store, got to go to the bank, mm -hmm. got to get the kids from soccer. I'm going to have this place where I'm just, I'm saying I'm just going to yield myself to God and ask to be filled with his presence, kenosis mm. and theosis, to walk with him mm. on the earth, to be so, so filled with him that you, that, that you don't compartmentalize mm. anymore. Mm. You literally walk. I think that is such a key. I think that can be a real stumbling block for people that they feel they have to, you know, go into their prayer closet. Not that there's anything wrong with that. And they come out and then it's like, okay, Jesus is kind of left in the closet or or I'm done with my prayer time now I've got to get on with my day. So how do you 
how do you help someone understand the merging and not to compartmentalize those two like that? I can actually take a manual with me. <laughs> right. Jesus is just too wonderful to leave in the closet. <laughs> I, I I can't imagine leaving him in the closet. And I can't imagine not having that really special, intimate time just with with him and me, mm-hmm. you know, just mm-hmm. that I don't share with anybody out there. Mm-hmm. That That's super precious. Mm-hmm. But we all walk on this earth. We all walk out there into the darkness. Um, even if we're pastors and missionaries, we're out there with other people and their conflicts and if you can't bring holy spirit in he he says okay you read in scripture he says father well father lives inside of you jesus lives inside of you holy spirit lives inside of you you have the triune god saying i want to live inside of you and breathe inside of you and breathe through you so what does that look like what does it feel like for you to breathe do you just want to breathe during your hour prayer time, mm. you'd be dead. Mm. What does it look like to eat Jesus, to drink Jesus? You want to do that once a week, Sunday morning? <laughs> How about twice a week if you're really spiritual, Wednesday and Sunday? <laughs> wow, you, you'd be famished. You'd mm. be so weak mm. and so miserable. That, But many Christians live like that. Mm. They, they think, oh, well, this is my time for him, mm-hmm. and this is my time for everything else. Mm-hmm. Um, I just think it's so wonderful to live every moment with them, even if, and it keeps your mind trained as well, left mm-hmm. brain as well mm-hmm. as right brain. Mm-hmm. It's not like mm-hmm. you check your brain at the yeah. door, but as you're, say you're sitting with your friends, I'm I'm praying the spirit all the time. Mm-hmm. I do it quietly so I'm not arrested in an airport, <laughs> but but I pray continuously in the spirit. Mm-hmm. And, and for me, prayer is like breathing. Jesus is my everything. I love Jesus with all my heart. And Abba Daddy, he's my, he's my daddy. I don't want to try to do this without him. I stay poor in spirit. The mm. poor in spirit see the kingdom are released. Mm. I also stay childlike. Like, mm. I, I need him. If God's not showing up, I don't want to be there. Mm. And, and I need him not just for an hour. I need him because he's the one I love. He's the one I can't stand not to be with him. I can't stand it. And I and he doesn't like it either. It's not, God's not the problem here. God's not <laughs> saying, uh, you know, I think I might touch you in that prayer closet and maybe Sunday morning. Mm. Or if you really, really want, maybe it's that charismatic service at night, mm-hmm. you know, once a month where everybody feels the presence it's not like that Mm. it's not like but but we make him like Mm -hmm. that Mm -hmm. he has a whole table laid out says eat jesus drink jesus here you go as much as you want and yet people are like oh no uh, it's not really for me Mm. and i had a vision one time of a big table laid out there was no end to it not to the right or the left and 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 daddy was there and i saw christians like little mice And they Mm. were running in front of the table picking up crumbs. Mm. And they ran away. Mm. And then I I had a picture. It was so beautiful of of God, of the Lord, not in his full glory. But there he was just smiling. And he went to the first person and he, he just picked him up and he held him by the shoulders in so much love. And he said, he said, you're my favorite. You're my favorite. And then, and then I watched him, and he went back, and he sat them right next to him at the table. It was awesome because he could go straight through the table. He didn't have to go around. He could just go straight through. I was fascinated <laughs> by that. And I know, he's, I know God could do anything, <laughs> but still, it, was, it really impacted, wow, it impacted me in the vision. And then he went down to the next one, and he came right back up to him. He just looked him in the eye, and he said, you're my favorite. And he took him and he sat him on his side. I thought, whoa, Lord. That was, wait. How could they both be your favorite? And then he's, <laughs> he's omnipotent, omniscient. If you have more than one child and you really, really love your kids, you want them to feel like they're the center mm-hmm. of your world, don't you? You want them to know you love them with all your heart. 
you don't say you I'm not going to feed because mm. you need to lose a few pounds but you I'm mm. really going to oh, I'm just mm. cherishing you're amazing parents don't do that why do we think God who's omniscient omnipotent mm. full of love he's a, he's a God of love he gave Jesus so we could connect totally connect deeply and intimately why would he he not want us to eat with mm. him day and night and night and day to be with him day and night he just loves it he <laughs> wants to be with you mm. even more than you want to be with him well i believe you but <laughs> <laughs> jesus doing some work in me Shabba. right now how do we how do we for those that are so are hiding behind a wall of shame and I think that that is such a wall to what you're talking about and why they come yeah. like little mice. It's Absolutely. like, I don't deserve it. I'm unworthy. And how do you, when you have met people like that, whether in Mozambique or South Africa or Canada or wherever, because I'm sure you have met a lot of people who have a lot of shame, yeah. how have you seen them transform when they connect with Jesus? Well, backing up from that. How do you help someone get past that wall of shame or fear or unworthiness? Well, first of all, none of us are worthy or none of us are perfect or holy mm. or anything without Jesus, without him. But when you meet Jesus, when you meet Jesus and you ask him to forgive your sin, he actually does. <laughs> he actually does it. I mean, you are we are like little rats or little worms or whatever mm. before we know him. Mm -hmm. It's not that he does, he wants us to be like that. He, mm -hmm. He's, it's, you know, we, as a, as a people, we've picked up many, many orphans, mm. thousands of children mm. all over the world in our movement. And, and a, uh, an orphan has a mentality of shame and there's never enough and I'm not allowed and I don't have the keys. Mm. Most cr believers live like that. But once the spirit of adoption hits you and you realize, wait a minute, wait a minute. He took me from orphan to son. Mm -hmm. He took me from orphan to daughter because of the greatest grace, the greatest love the world has ever seen. Jesus did this. And he said, now you don't have to be an orphan. Now you don't have to be like a little mouse. You don't mm -hmm. have to have any more shame. I mean, sin is a shameful thing, but the grace of God, Shakarava, He mm. covers us and He cleanses us from all unrighteousness. And He says, now, you, every day, I'm going to show you, even if you have a wrong thought, a wrong motive, He's going to say, as a daughter, as a daughter or as a son, I'm going to just guide you in love. And you're going to receive that grace, that grace. And once you understand grace... Once you really understand what Jesus did on the cross, then you really understand what it is to walk as daddy's girl mm. or mm. or daddy's boy. Mm. It's like, whoa, grace is real. Mm. What Jesus mm. did on that cross is so magnificent, mm. is so extravagant. And Abba, Abba says now, where you couldn't come in and you were ashamed and you were mm. like, I'm dirty, I'm not worthy, I'm not ready, I can't do it. When you really understand what Jesus did, then everything changes. Because mm. you, you, you just realize that curtain really is mm. torn. And I'm really loved. I'm so cherished by my daddy. Mm. I'm so cherished by Jesus. And, and Holy Spirit wants to live in every room. And you fall in love. What what intimacy is this? You just you fall so in love with him that you can't stand to live even a moment without mm. him. Even in your sleep, you can't live without him. <sighs> I'll take some more of that passion. I pray that. <laughs> I am. I am. <laughs> I'm just like God. Oh, I love you, Jesus. She's one of the, one of the most understated and humble people. Mm -hmm. She. She carries the presence of the Lord with her. You you can feel it when you're with her in the room. It it was so surreal and so powerful. I remember when she got out of the car coming for the interview and we met her at the car, 
she she got out of the vehicle and introduced herself. Hi, I'm Heidi. As, as if, if we wouldn't as know. If we were, Hello. <laughs> <laughs> and hugged us both like, you yeah. know, she knew us and loved us. But here she is, just a normal person who has chosen to cultivate this the intimacy with the Lord, the secret place with the Lord. And she's also chosen to take him with her everywhere she goes. And that being the case, she sees miracle after miracle she after does. miracle. And incredible, supernatural, true miracles where people are blind eyes are being open, paralyzed people walking, limbs growing Deaf back. Ears open. Because that's what Jesus did on this earth. And because she knows him so well, there's no doubt that he will do this or that. And, you know, that's that can open up a whole other 45 podcasts about healing. <laughs> and that's not really what we're talking about right now, physical healing. But being in the room with her made me want to be with Jesus more because she is a woman of peace and joy and exhibits truly the fruits of the spirit and the joy of being in his presence all the time. And this lady, I'm telling you, if you heard, if if you ever get a chance to read anything about her, she has been shot at and she's a full-time missionary in Mozambique and she's come up against warlords and witch doctors and through the years has, she has incredible testimonies of escaping near death from disease, from attack in every single way you can imagine and God has delivered her from them all. And she truly is poor in spirit. She is so humble. She's often said, I'm just a laid down lover. I'm I'm a, a laid down lover in the dirt. I'm just a little person in the dirt. And you're like, how can you say that? You're just this giant. But because of her humility and grace and intimacy with Jesus, it makes her a giant. Her whole foundation is love for Jesus. And I think that if she never did an act of service again and just spent time with Jesus, that would bring her joy. But at the same time, she is compelled by love. Right. She's she's compelled to do the things she does, and she she works hard. I also finished reading a biography of her, and she she never ceases working and serving the poor, and that's where she goes is to the lowest of the low, to the poorest of the poor, and that is her heart is to love and serve the poorest of the poor. But it is a compulsion of love, not anything out of striving or performance. Right. It's yeah. because she has encountered and knows the love of Jesus so deeply in her heart that she wants everyone to experience it. And she wants people to know that it's about carrying him with you mm -hmm. everywhere you go and not separating the quiet time or the personal time, but integrating and carrying him in his presence into the everyday, day-to-day, -day, mundane, normal routine of your life and not separating that. And I think a lot of times people think, what she was talking about, well, I'll go to church two times a week. There's my spiritual duty. Yeah. Well, he's living water. And if we're only partaking of that twice a week, I mean, we'd never do that in our physical bodies. We'd never deny ourselves or separate ourselves from what our basic needs are with food and sleep and water. But we do that with him all the time. And I think it takes practice. I think that if we can put that picture of the, that's why I said, you know, we have our prayer closet time and then leave Jesus in the closet when we go to work or go take care of our children, whatever we're doing, of learning, cultivating that, practicing his presence wherever we are and not seeing it as a separate thing does take practice. It, it takes right. intentionality. Well, it does. <laughs> and what I was just thinking is that Jesus is Emmanuel, God with us. That's something that that you, Melinda, and I have been more intentional about just with the inner healing modalities that we've explored and the Emmanuel approach, which we're going to get into in future episodes. But he is with us all the time. So it's not a matter of beckoning or begging him to come. It's positioning ourselves in a way to be aware mm -hmm. And to recognize, and like she said, invite and welcome the presence. I've been a worship leader for 30 years. And one of the things that, that I want to be intentional about when I lead 
a musical journey of worship is I don't want to be in a place where we're begging and begging and begging. I want to be in a place where we are positioning ourselves to receive and to be aware of his manifested presence. When Solomon was dedicating the temple, the verse in, in Chronicles says something about the, the glory of the Lord filling the temple. And the the word is actually, it filled and kept filling the temple. It kept coming and coming and coming. And all of them fell face down because they could not stand in the presence. If we had the full manifestation of God's full glory, it would kill us because we don't have bodies that can handle that. And even when Moses asked for God to show him his glory, he said, hey, I will cover you here in this cleft of the rock with my hand and you will get to see where my glory passed by. But yet we want as much as we can experience here. And it's a matter of being intentional, being aware that he's already here, making ourselves aware of that, choosing to acknowledge and welcome his presence. And when we have that encounter with his presence, shame melts. Shame has to bow to that because right. if we're having that true encounter with him, like she's talking about, and like we're so passionate about sharing with others and helping others experience, shame shrivels and dies. And, you know, I think the reason, I think we talked about this earlier, yes, Heidi Baker did not uh, found per se, an inner healing model. But when you are in the presence of Jesus, the way that she carries it and brings it, you do get set free. I Absolutely. mean, even just sitting with her for that hour or so, when she talked a little bit, she shared her vision about having the table and all these people were just eating the crumbs like mice and then had the picture of the father taking someone's yeah. face in his hands and saying, you're my favorite. Well, she did that with me. You can't see that obviously with <laughs> audio, but yeah. she actually put her hands on my shoulders and, and was about six inches from my face and just looked right. And it makes me smile thinking about it and said, you're my favorite. And man, it was Jesus saying that to me. Obviously, you know, that's what she was sharing is that this is what the father God was saying to people, to each of his children. Right. And the way that she did that with me in sharing the story, I felt like, and I said, I think Jesus is doing something to me right now. Well, it was true. I was tearing up. Yeah. I'm like, I shouldn't be crying on this. We and both like, were tearing up. It was, it was so powerful was and profound powerful. in just that two minutes or one 30 seconds of her doing that, that in that moment brought healing to my heart in some way, shape or fashion that I, yeah. I may not be aware of and go, oh, that's where it healed my heart. But I just got an injection of deeper revelation of the Father's love for me. Woo! That's yeah. what it's all about. Yeah. That did take me to a greater place of healing and wholeness. Because revelation and encounter is transformational. Yes. It wasn't just information. It wasn't just a cool experience, but that was an encounter. And that was an encounter with the presence of Jesus being manifested in that moment and carried well by someone who has cultivated deep intimacy with him. I mean, it was it was the full package right there. And we have the opportunity to do that with others. We do. But we have to have the revelation first ourselves. Right. We cannot share with others something that we aren't walking in, something that we don't experience. And I'm saying this from my own here Melinda that I have to cultivate that intimacy. Right. I can't share with others a revelation of the Father's heart if I haven't had it myself. And it, like you said, Kathy, the glory kept, keeps coming, that, that term, it keeps coming. And that brings love at his presence. I can't just settle for, oh, I had this great encounter with Heidi Baker when she took me by the shoulders and looked me in the eye and I felt Jesus. Well, that was that was a while ago and that is not going to last me. That doesn't right. sustain me for three months. It was a wonderful experience, but really it was just a, here's a, a quick encouragement. Now go and continue to cultivate that. And that's her message is right. we may encounter him in some great meeting and everyone's crying or laughing or whatever, however, you know, you express when you feel his touch but it's the day to day. It's the when the smoke is gone, you know, on the <laughs> stage or whatever, wherever we experience that or the lights are mm -hmm. off at the church. When do I cultivate 
that experience with Jesus. I have to do it on my own. I can't wait for some pastor, leader, minister, Heidi Baker, whoever, worship leader to help me go into God's presence. I have to cultivate that on an intimate level. And that's why one of the reasons that we're sharing Heidi's interview is that it's that's what she does. That's what I we just talked about. But cultivating that intimacy with him is absolutely vital. Well, it's kind of like if you're in a car at the top of a hill, you can put it in neutral and coast down. Like you have, you can be propelled from a mountaintop experience for a short time, but eventually the road's going to level out. And if you have no gas in the car, how far are you going to get? And a lot of times, especially in more charismatic circles, there's like these mountaintop woohoo experiences with certain church services or healing service or hearing a particular person speak. And it's like this big boost and it propels you for a time, but it's going to run out. If you don't have gas in the car, it will stop rolling and forward momentum will stop. And so that's why it is so important to cultivate intimacy with the Lord. We've got more content coming. Yeah. There's two more segments that are on their way. It's good um, stuff, y'all. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much for listening. And if you have any questions, any comments, please contact us through our website, face to face ministries.org. That's T, that is T and O, not a two, face to face ministries.org. Like us on Facebook. We're really easy to find. Follow mm -hmm. us on Instagram at face to face min. That's one word, face-to-face -face men, and sign up for our monthly newsletter. You will not be spammed, I promise, nope. just a monthly newsletter to find out what's Keep up with going <laughs> on with us. And please subscribe. Yeah, definitely subscribe. We don't want you to miss any episodes because we do have such great content coming. A couple more episodes with Heidi Baker. And also give us a five-star rating and write a review wherever it is that you find podcasts and listen to your podcast. It really helps to draw attention to it and get it more visible to more people. Share it with your friends. Help us get the word out. And also we want to give a special shout out of thanks to Lisa Roich of Power of His Love Ministries in the Houston, Texas area. She has sponsored our interview with Heidi Baker. We would love for you guys to partner with us financially as well. It costs money for us to do this. It costs money for us to go and get these interviews. They are done face to face. There is a film project in the works and a book project in the works. The commission on us to get the word out about inner healing and the full benefits package of the cross. We have 10 interviews that we've already filmed and we are putting them together and they'll be available. So it's costing us money to do that. And this is your opportunity to invest and get the word out with us. Help us get the word out sponsor a podcast, sponsor an interview, just help how, us get the word out. How do they out. do that? I'm glad you asked. <laughs> <laughs> right now you can go to face2faceministries.org slash give. And there are several ways to give on the site there. There's different ways that you can give by check or through the PayPal giving fund, which is a way that uh, you can give electronically online. And we are a 501c3 we are. profit charity. So we are. tax deduction. We available. are. We're excited. We got two more episodes coming. So we'll right. see you next time. Thank you. Bye. Thank you so much for listening. For more information about us and our vision, please go to face2faceministries.org. That's face, T-O, faceministries.org. Please like, share, subscribe, rate, review. Help us get, get the, the word, word out. out. There is so much more to come.